Well, happy Easter, church. Come on, you stand with me. Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? Come on. I see lightning, I hear thunder. Something stirring six feet under. Dead things coming back to life again. I believe there's about to be another resurrection. Oh, come on, I see. I see signs and I see wonder. I see bursts of living color. Dead things, dead things coming back to life again. I believe there's about to be another resurrection. We sing, come alive. Let's get those hands together. Here we go. Come alive. Wake up, sleeper. He is risen. We are risen with him. Yeah. Hallelujah, it is finished. See the great nobody in it. Dead things coming back to life again. I believe there's about to be another resurrection. Come on, help me out a little. We sing, come alive. Come alive. Wake up, sleeper, he is risen. We are risen with him. Paradise, flung wide open, he is risen. We are risen with him. Come alive, wake up, sleeper.
Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to South Park Church. My name's Lindsay Rich. I'm one of the pastors here. And this morning, we are going to start with a traditional Easter greeting. And this is how that's going to go. I am going to start by saying, he is risen. And then you are going to say, he is risen indeed. And then I'm going to say, he is risen. And then you're going to say, he is risen indeed. We're going to do it three times. And each time, it will get a little bit louder. Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> he is risen. He is risen. risen He is risen. Amen. He is risen indeed. That is why we are here this morning on Easter Sunday celebrating the resurrection of Jesus. Um, You can have a seat for just a minute if you like. Um, I'm so excited to get to spend part of our Easter Sunday morning together. Um, If you are with us today and you are um, a guest or you have been around for a long time, we are so glad that you're here, whether you're in person or you're joining us online. Just a really warm welcome um, to you. We would love for you to learn more about who we are. You know, we have a really unique story here in this place. Um, This community is one that's been around for a long time, for decades, but God is doing a new thing here. And um, we are one church that has two different styles of worship. So we are upstairs in this modern space worshiping, and right now at the same time on the second floor in the traditional space, there is a traditional worship service going on. But we are one church, one community. And so today, after the service, I would love to invite you to stay um, and join us in the crossroads, which is the big open space on the second floor. And you can um, hang out, meet some people from both of the services. We have coffee, we have donuts, and today, because it is Easter, we will be flowering the cross down there. Um, Some have already started, um, but if you haven't uh, been able to participate in that yet, if you'd like, come after the service, there will be flowers, um, and this is a more traditional Easter thing, to put a flower on the cross as a symbol of what was a symbol of death has now um, brought life and, and beauty from it. Um, okay, so if you learn more about who we are, one of the things that you will learn is that we talk a good bit about prayer, and that is because we believe that Jesus is alive. We don't think that God is just far off somewhere, um, but that he actually interacts with the world that he created and loves. And so um, the Lord invites us to bring our requests and our concerns and things to him. And when we do that, not only does heaven respond, but we ourselves are changed in the process. Um, so we also have this as a way to stand with each other in community um, and to grow together. So if there is something that's going on in your life, in your family, at your job, in your school, um, we would love to pray with you and for you about that. Um, There are prayer cards on the table outside or anytime during the week you can fill out a a prayer request and we'd love to pray with you um, about that. Another thing that we um, talk about is generosity, and um, we believe that God so loved the world that he gave, and that's one of the ways that we try to follow Jesus as well. Um, So if that is something that you are interested in, we don't pass an offering uh, basket or a bucket or anything like that here, but there are boxes in the back of the room, um, and throughout the week you can join us um, with your financial gifts. There's a couple things I wanted to let you know um, that are coming up because not only do we gather on Sunday mornings to worship, but we have things that are going on throughout the week. Um, We have stuff for our student ministry. So if you have a middle or high schooler, um, we have stuff going on for them. Next Sunday, they're going to be doing disc golf tournament again. So that's going to be at 3 o'clock at Elon Park. Um, It is not too late to get involved and sign up with that. We would love to have you um, join with that. And then we have another um, a prayer service that's coming up that is going to be on Monday, May the 2nd. That's at 6.30 downstairs in the traditional space. And if you were able to um, join us for the Thursday service we had just a couple days ago, that was kind of the feel of these prayer services. They're a bit more contemplative um, and reflective. And um, so you, you kind of, you sit and you receive and you pray and you can meditate. Um, so we'd love to have you join us for that as well. Um, Yeah, so today, um, Pastor Kyle, who is our lead pastor, is here, and he is going to be preaching live downstairs, so we will get to um, see and participate in that, but before we do, um, I want to invite you to stand again and um, continue worshiping the Lord through singing. I saw Satan fall like lightning 
I saw darkness run for cover But the miracle it I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven I believe in signs and winding, yeah I have resurrection power Still the miracle and I just can't get over it My name is registered in heaven My praise belongs to you forever Come on, we sing This is my testimony from death to life Screens rewrote my story. I testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm just a boy. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Yeah, come on. Is it come together? Come together, sons and daughters. Washed in water, sing the praise, sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father. Our God will finish what He started. Yes, our God will finish what He started. Come on, here we go. This is my testimony from death to life. This grace rewrote my story. I'll take the body. By Jesus Christ the righteous, unjustified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Come on, we sing again. If I'm not dead, you're not dying. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead, you're not dying. Oh, greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead, you're not dying. Greater things are still to come. From day to life, His grace rewrote my story. Come on, you got I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm just a boy. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. I'm alive. Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm just a boy. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. I'm alive. There's a sling in my voice and a stone in my praise Pushing back when the darkest weapons fall There's a power on my lips
There are days I have seen Filled with heartache and loss That have buried my heart beneath it And every time this praise breaks out Dead things rise up from the ground I won't leave my song inside that empty grave Cause there is resurrection power Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, thank you so much for the ability to come together. Father, that we rely on the cross, that we have faith in the resurrection. Lord, that you, we know that you are risen once again. Father, in all things, we trust you. We love you. Thank you for who you are. Because who you are, Father, is who we are. Lord, thank you that we are your adopted children of Christ. Father, that without you, without your blood, we are nothing. Lord, remind us in each season who we are in you. The story of our redemption starts today. Lord, we love you so much. Amen. You may have a seat. It doesn't take long to recognize the brokenness surrounding us. Division, hatred, fear, uncertainty, the 
pain we're witnessing is real and the need for a savior is undeniable. It's this need which broke the heart of God and moved him to do the unimaginable. For God so loved the world, he sent his only son to change our eternity, to be the perfect sacrifice for us. Love on a cross, dying once for all, laid to rest in the darkness of a tomb. Today, as we face so many unknowns, may we remember the simple truth of Easter. The stone has been rolled away. The grave is empty. Jesus is alive. And love has risen. Happy Easter. Welcome to South Park Church. I'm Pastor Kyle Thompson. So excited to see all of you with us, whether you're watching online or joining us in person here in our traditional sanctuary or to those of you upstairs in our modern worship service, we welcome you joining you uh, in for the sermon today. We're one church. We have two different worship styles and lots of ways to connect together. But we're here today to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, lots of Christians around the world today are going to do a brief, responsive uh, kind of worship of God. And it goes like this. I will say, He is risen. And then you will say, He is risen indeed. So let's do that together. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen Praise be to God. Amen. This, a uh, couple weeks ago, I went to my son Luke's travel basketball practice and uh, the coaches were really getting on the boys. They weren't listening as well as they should, and so they had to do a lot of extra running. And so Coach blew his whistle, said, get to the baseline. And they had to start running suicides where you run to the free throw line and back, then you run to the midcourt line and back, then you run to the other free throw line and back, then all the way down and back. And they had to do this several times. And I was sitting with a, a few other dads, and one of them looked over and said, that brings back a lot of bad memories. <laughs> And we all kind of chuckled at that and we all kind of winced because we had all had experience playing sports and just know the pain when a coach is mad at you. When I was in high school, I played soccer and my coach, uh, when he'd get mad at us, we're out on a big long field, he would blow the uh, whistle and say, get on the line. And he'd make us run those suicides as well across a full soccer or football field. But as we're running along, he'd, he'd blow the whistle again, and we had to stop, and he'd yell out, you know, do push-ups until I tell you to stop. Then he'd blow the whistle, he had to sprint, he'd blow it again, then you have to sit down and do sit-ups, or sit like a V with your abs and hold your feet off the ground for minutes at a time. He called those running Oscars. I, I don't know why he called it an Oscar. It has nothing to do with an Academy Award. But when I heard that whistle and get on the end line, and the Oscars are happening, it was, a, it was a look of terror from the team. And so it's only something that we could understand by going through that together. I still see some of my teammates from years ago, and we can still think about that moment where Coach Haney blowing his whistle and torturing us in doing those Oscars. And so, you know, there's just certain shared experiences that we have with other people that unless you go through it, you just might not understand that. I want to show you a picture today of uh, some of the very best friends in my life. These are uh, three other pastors and I. We were ordained together over 26 years ago, uh, and we have been in a small covenant group of ministers for the full 26 years. Uh, these are some of my best friends in the world. They're like brothers to me. And uh, the other day we were talking about why is it do you think that we gravitated towards one another, and, and why are we such good friends? And we we started to try to figure that out. You know, we said, well, part of it is we have a similar intellect and a similar level of maturity, both of them being very low. Uh, we, we have similar socioeconomic backgrounds. Uh, we're not a lot richer or poorer than the others. We don't envy one another or feel sorry for one another. Uh, things like that. We all like Duke basketball. We suffer through that together and we cheer for them together. Uh, but, you know, we kind of came up to the point that, you know, a lot of it is that we have some really unique shared experiences as pastors. 
we go through things that not a lot of other people go through, good and bad, and, and we can talk about that together in ways that no one else can understand. The joy of baptizing someone who's given their life to Jesus and seeing a true transformation in their life, there's no feeling like that in the world and then on the other side, the tragedy of having to oversee a funeral for people that we've known for years in our congregations that, that have died, and some of them in, in some pretty ter- traumatic ways, and just the heartbreak that we have of burying our friends. And there's just something that only another pastor could understand. And so we're grateful to have each other for 26 years in ministry to share that together. So I want to ask you today, in your life, who are those people? Who are the people in your life that you have shared experiences with that only you can understand that experience together? That you come together and you can laugh about it, you can cringe about it. It's the people that you have done life with together. You you can look at someone, you might not even be able to say something and know exactly what they're saying. Of course, there's people in our families. We grew up in nuclear families, extended families, and, and we have that unique experience that we can laugh about and we can cry about, right? We're, we're kind of dreading seeing weird Uncle Eddie at Easter Sunday today at lunch, right? And so we have those shared experiences. You know, maybe it's where you work. Maybe you're an attorney or maybe you're a physician or maybe you're a teacher and, and your group of others that you work with, only you understand what you do on a day-to-day basis, Maybe you're a musician and, and, and you feel the joy of coming together and singing a song or playing music that only you can do together and, and enjoying that together. Or maybe you're an artist and, and you create with other artists and what that's like. And it's just only you can understand the experience that you have shared together. Or maybe it's being a parent or maybe it's being a, a grandparent. Laura and I have a bond that we share, just the two of us. Only we know what it's like to parent our sons, Luke and Nathan. And that's a very special thing. Who are those people in your life that you have these shared experiences with, right? And and that bonds us together. And then sometimes it's it's hard to connect to others because we don't necessarily have the same sort of experiences. Laura and I parent our boys together and we're, we're united in that. It brings us together. But she's the one that gave birth and I will never understand that because I'm a man and not able to do that. We were watching Netflix last night and on the screen there was a woman who was giving birth and Lord just kind of starts cringing, you know, and I just, that's something only she can understand or another woman can understand. I've not been through that, right? So there's some circumstances where we might feel a little bit lonely that no one can understand exactly what we're going through. Like the poor guy that got the the last touchdown pass that Tom Brady ever threw that broke the record, right? And he sold it for over a half a million dollars the day before Tom Brady unretired. (laughs) And he had to give all that money back, right? I mean, just unique circumstance is something that only you can go through, right? But then... There are those shared circumstances that are good, but we also have shared circumstances with each other that we go through hard times. And it bonds us together like like nothing else can bond us together. Like my teammates when we had to run those terrible things that my coach did. Like Luke and, and his teammates that had to run all those suicides the other day. Like maybe you've been laid off with a group from your, from your workplace and all of you were laid off at the same time and only you can understand the pain that, that happens. Or maybe you're an artist or maybe you're a musician and you know what it's like to pour yourself into what you do and the beauty that you do only to have people critique it and say how terrible it is. And and only another artist, only another musician can understand the pain of that. Or the pain of being a teacher who pours yourself into the students and the students don't, don't appreciate what you're doing for them. I think you see where we're going. Who are the people in your life that you share these difficult circumstances with? You're all bonding together right now thinking, wow, this is a long-winded sermon by Pastor Kyle. When's lunch coming, right? So we go through these difficult circumstances, and sometimes that brings us closer together. Maybe it's an illness that we're fighting. Maybe it's a fear that we have to deal with. My mother, a few years ago, had to have open-heart surgery where she had to have part of her heart replaced Uh, And that was a very stressful time, obviously, for me and my family. And so as my father and my brother and I were sitting in the waiting room while she's back having her surgery and we're praying and we're talking together, right, that that put us together in a moment that we'll never forget that, that united us. 
And then my mother, thank God, went through the surgery well, and, and she went to her cardiac rehab for months. She had to meet with other patients who were like her to get back into good physical shape, and, and they bonded together like no one else because they went through the pain and, and fear of having open heart surgery and surviving that. And so they began to develop friendships. And even once the cardiac rehab program was officially over, many of them kept coming to see each other and to go through the program because they had bonded so closely together. I mentioned my friends that are my pastor friends and how we've bonded together over difficult circumstances. We've all had to, to bury young people who died before they should have died. We've had to bury people who committed suicide. We've done some really hard things and that's brought us together because we share this common bond. But it's also created a relationship to where we can support each other through hard times that we might not necessarily understand from first person experience. Of my four friends in 26 years, one of them has had a spouse who died. The three of us don't know what that's like, but we could be there for him in that hard time. One of my, four, one of my three friends had cancer and he fought that and, and it was scary that he almost died. He, he came through that okay. The, the rest of us have not had cancer, but because we had that relationship, we were there for him and we could sit with him as, as he suffered through what he was going through. Who are those people in your life who get you through the hard times, who get you through the challenging moments? I wanna share a quote with you today. I think it's pretty powerful. It says, deep communion and dear compassion are formed much more by shared pain than by shared pleasure, right? We can share pleasure together, it's all great, but there's something about getting through pain, right? We don't, we're not excited about that. We don't wanna sign up for that, but there's something that bonds us together in the midst of that. Who are those people in your life? How have you gotten through the hard parts of your life? How has God brought you through some of the challenges of your life? And then there are the relationships or, or, the, or the folks in the world that we may not ever think that we can truly understand. Like if you really had a chance to sit down with your favorite celebrity or uh, a, a world leader or politician, say the Queen of England came here today and we had a chance to talk to her with coffee and donuts after the service, you know, what do you think we would really talk about? What's it like to be a monarch and, and have all the money in the world and live in castles and travel all over the world, right? We'd be fascinated to hear about that, but I don't know that we could resonate with that, that we could, we could go out and feel like there were comrades, you know, pip, pip, cheerio, we'll see you later, right? It's just not gonna have this bond because it's just such a different life experience. And I wonder if sometimes we're afraid that that would be our encounter with God. God is great, God is good. I'd like to be in a relationship with God, but how can I be in a relationship with someone like God? God created not just all of humanity and this beautiful earth and all the planets in our solar system and our sun, but all the many millions of planets all throughout the universe, right? God knows everything, God created everything. God is outside of time. We have nothing in common with God from that perspective. So as we celebrate Jesus today, how can we do that in a way that we feel a personal, loving connection to the God of the universe? Here's how. I want to read to you a passage of scripture from the Old Testament that was written hundreds of years before Jesus would be born, but it's about Jesus, the Son of God, God himself, right? God of the universe, and I think when we read it, we're going to be able to identify with this. Let's read these words from Isaiah, who is a prophet, a spokesperson for God, talking about the future Messiah, Jesus. Jesus was despised and rejected by humankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him and by his wounds we are healed. Rather than just being a transcendent God that is way beyond our comprehension or understanding, Jesus became one of us. 
and he encountered what it was like to be human, the good parts of being human and the hard parts of being human. Jesus understands what it's like when things don't go your way. Jesus understands what it's like when your friends let you down or worse, betray you. Jesus understands emotional pain. Jesus understands physical pain. He went through all of that because he loves you and me. And because of that, Jesus can relate to us. Jesus can understand our brokenness. Jesus can understand our fear. Jesus can understand our humanity because he experienced that. And in that, we can be bound together with God. I want to show you a picture that's going to be hard to look at. It's a picture of Jesus depicted in a movie uh, when he was crucified. It's hard to look at that. But at the same time, there's like this magnetism that draws us there because we can identify with this picture because we can see ourselves in it. Not that we've ever been crucified and hopefully not whipped or anything like that, but that we know what it's like to suffer. We know what it's like to feel like that on the inside. We can identify with Jesus. This God, this God is no stranger to us. We see ourselves in Christ. I want to share a couple points that I think that we can draw from that. The first is that suffering people can love and trust a suffering God. Can we have anything to do with Jesus? Can we have anything to do with God? Do we have anything in common? Yes, we do. We're broken and we suffer and Jesus understands that because he has been in our place. He has walked in our shoes. And only a suffering God can save suffering people. Right? Jesus got down, he got his hands dirty and, and he took upon himself our wrongdoing, which the Bible calls sin, which is what separates us from God and from each other. Jesus can, can see that we suffer from guilt and shame, that we will die one day. And Jesus understands what we're going through is in the idea of hell, which means brokenness or broken relationships between God and each other. And so Jesus knows what it's like to suffer, and he's with us when we do. And that can bring us comfort that when we feel like no one in the world can understand us, everyone's against us or betrayed us, we're not alone because Jesus understands and he's been through it and he's gotten through the other side and he will take us there as well. He is worthy of our trust. This is a suffering God who is worthy of our trust and can get us through on the other side. He's with us in the midst of that. I want to show you another quote that I think is powerful here. Only the survivors of whatever you're going through, whatever brokenness you're experiencing right now, only you can know the full terror of the passage, the arms that held them through it all, and the power of the obstacles that were overcome. The people that get you through, the people that you're bound together with because you've gone through these challenging circumstances, and Jesus is there. He's with us. He's with us when we face these difficult points in our lives because he's lived through it. And he walks us through it and gets us to the other side. There's a beautiful passage in in the book of Romans I want to share with you by a guy named Paul who was a first century pastor who wrote most of the New Testament. And he's writing to a church uh, of people who lived in Rome, uh, which is currently in Italy. And this is what he says. He says, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Now look at that. In all things God works together for good. Right? We obviously see God at work when things are going right, right? When we're baptizing babies and, and we're getting married and all kinds of good things are happening, we're getting promotions. We see God at work in that. But here, right, Paul says that even in the bad times in your life, when you're broken, when you're suffering, that God is with you. He's not causing those bad times to happen, but he's with you and he's working to bring good into your lives. Praise God. And we've seen that he does that. He's done that through his own resurrection, right? Through the worst thing that could ever happen, he came through that on the other side and he can get us through whatever we're facing in our lives right now. And when we see Jesus working in our lives and we know that we're not alone, it also helps us become more compassionate for other people. When we see other people who are suffering in ways that we've suffered, then of course we can speak to that. But when we see other people suffering in ways that we have no idea, we can still have compassion and empathy for them because we know what it's like to hurt and God gives us one another to help make it through. 
Now, the good news today is that we, while we have suffering in common with Jesus, that's not the end of the story. That's not the last word. That's not all the sum total of our existence. It's part of the story, and there are better things. And today we're going to read that, and we're going to celebrate that in the Gospels today. Let's read this. To, let me read this to you. If you want to follow along from Matthew's Gospel, this is after Jesus has been laid in the tomb, after his crucifixion. Uh, after the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came, and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. And there was a violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. And his appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow and the guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. And the angel said to the women, do not be afraid for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he is risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy and ran to tell his disciples. And suddenly Jesus met them. Can you imagine what it's like? They thought he was dead. Now the tomb is empty. They thought he's been robbed, a grave robbery. Now they're standing looking at the resurrected Jesus. How would you feel? How amazing would that be? Right? And he said, greetings. And they came to him and they clasped his feet and they worshiped him. And then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. We have suffering in common with God, but we also have victory in common with God because the cross and the tomb are not the end of the story. The cross with a suffering Jesus is now empty. The tomb with a dead Jesus is now empty and Jesus is alive and he is in the world, right? So what's the point today? What's the big idea? What's the takeaway? This is the good news today. Only a suffering God can save suffering people, right? Jesus knows the pain that we bear, but only a victorious God can transform us into victorious people. Suffering is not the end. Death itself is not the end. We serve a victorious God who transforms us into victorious people. When we invite Jesus into our lives to be our Lord and Savior, he will take away our sin, our wrongdoing, our guilt and our shame and our death and our hell and wipe it away and give us joy and give us love and give us peace and give us a life that is full now and forever in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus will give us victorious moments like the birth of babies and weddings and promotions at work and, and victories on the field and in what we do, right? He gives us those victories. And even in our broken moments, when the healing doesn't come, when we still get dumped by our girlfriend or our boyfriend, when we lose our job, even in those moments, he gives us victory because he's with us and he's working to bring good from it. We might not see it now, but we will see it soon. We serve a God who understands our suffering. We also serve a God who understands victory because that's what Jesus came to give us is victory. And we celebrate that today. And so today I would invite you to consider doing a couple of things this week as, as action steps to follow up on what we're talking about. So it's not just me talking up here, but that it affects our lives, that the, the scripture affects our lives and what we do. The first thing would be to trust and love Jesus, to know that the God of the universe understands you and has been in your place, has walked on this earth and, and knows the joys and knows the challenges that we have. Right, trust and love this Jesus that, that he's going to bring good into your lives, that he can forgive you of the wrong things that you've done, right? And, and, and trust and love him. Ask him to be your Lord and Savior. Know that he is here to give you strength and to give you purpose and to get you through whatever difficult circumstance you're going through to bring you victory in your life. And then the second thing I invite you to do is, is to help someone who's suffering. To find a cause in the world that moves your heart and do something about it. Maybe someone, you know, you're bothered because you see children that are hungry in our city. 
Maybe you're bothered because you see children who are having educational challenges in our city. Maybe you're, you're fed up with, with racial injustice. Maybe you're, you're sick and tired of the war in, in the Ukraine, right? Find a cause and do something about it, right? Because we can be compassionate for others because we know what it's like to suffer and we know what it's like to have people help us. We know what it's like to have someone on our side. We know what it's like to have someone who advocates for us, right? So trust and love Jesus, Trust and love Jesus, that's what we're here about today, and help someone in your life who's suffering. Right? That brings God joy, that will bring you joy in your life. So my friends that I've been together with, the four of us for 26 years, we talked about some of the reasons that, that we're such good friends, and I think all of those are true, but I think there's one even bigger, more underlying reason that holds us together, and I think it's this. It's that we trust and love and serve Jesus Christ. At the heart of our friendship is Jesus, right? And so if our relationships in our families, with our friendships, even in our workplace, with our neighbors, right, if those are anchored in Jesus, then good things will happen. When we trust and we love and we serve Jesus, right? The brokenness in the world that we see all around us, it begins to heal up. It begins to, to come back together, right? Do you know that? great relationship with Jesus? Do you have that, the opportunity to approach the God of the universe who understands you and wants to help you in your difficult times and bring you victorious moments in your life? Do you trust and love him? If you do, if you give it a chance, it will change your life. So trust and love Jesus, help someone who is suffering and have a happy, blessed Easter in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. To those of you watching in the Modern Worship Service, we'll invite Cole and the band to come back up and lead you in your closing song. To those of you watching online, we invite you to stick with us. And to those who are here in our traditional space, let's pray together. Gracious and ever-loving God, we thank you. Well, amen. Will you stand with me? sorrow and dead in my sin lost without hope and no place to begin your love made a way to let mercy come me so when death was arrested Wishing ash, ash was redeemed, only beauty remained. My orphan heart is given away. My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance. When death was arrested, my life began. We sing, Oh, your grace, oh, your grace, so free, washes over me. You have made me new, now life begins with you. Release from my chains, I'm a prisoner no more. My shame will ransom you faithfully. He canceled my debt and he called me his free.
Amen. Well, thank you so much for coming and worshiping with us this morning. Um, and I hope you will stay and join us for um, Flowering the Cross and Coffee and Donuts and the Crossroads. We will meet again next Sunday at the same time. Hope to see you back then. Happy Easter, everyone. Um, go in peace. See you soon. <laughs>